Hello, I'm Conrad. Today I will be interviewing Harry Carey. Hey, Conrad! I'm sorry, man. I lost my glasses. I'm a little blind. But along the way, when I was stumbling through the wilderness, I picked up a sombrero. So I figure they even each other out. Your thoughts, Conrad? Well, it is true that the sombrero evens out. Uh, uh, I pass. Ricky, come a little closer. I can't see you. Oh, no, wait, that's a little bit too far. You are a dangerous dinosaur from the Paleolithic era. I am eight stories high a crustacean from the Paleolithic era. Yes, it is true. But when hey, you found. Hey, Conrad! You cut me off. I always do that. Hey, Conrad! You have any of those graham crunchy things? I really like those. How much do they cost? This is not a sale on flamingo munchies. Oh, it's a I'm sale on dinosaur munchies. My apology. I'm sorry. I can't believe you're wearing a sombrero in ridiculous outfits. The weather is oh so terrible today. I'm sweating in this pink suit I just bought. You're sweating? Look at me. It's like somebody opened up a fire hydrant. Like I was a little, like, ghetto kid in the street. The police come by and goes, hey, yeah, just open that. this up. And, and, and you can bathe in it. And you can get a shower for once in a while. Did you have someone on lookout for the police? Because that would be fringe class if you guys got caught. I know, we already adhered to section 372 of, of the Constitution of the, the inner city states where they, where they say that, no, if you shall open up the fire hydrant on days when it increases 92 degrees, and, and that only then is it acceptable to violate public laws and decency. I mean, I took my shirt off. I know Millard Fillmore wrote those laws, but was Hillary Clinton involved as well in the writing process? Or she, she had her, her say in the Geneva Convention with the 13th Convention, as suspension Convention Center, hey. Oh, the Convention Center. That's near City Hall on 4th Street, right? We take the D train? I went there once. I remember like six years ago when I was still alive. Those were the good old days. But they said, hey, Harry, why don't you come and like speak in front of some youth? And I said, who are these youths? And they said, these youths are... They're the next generation of politicians, last one. Well, that's got to be a good thing, right? Because when these kids grow up, they're going to stop staring at me. I don't respond well to that. Yeah, there's other people over there maybe you can look at. Look, hey, look over there. But I'll tell you, <laughs> there's some things you just can't explain. <laughs> and that's where I come in. Your thoughts, Connie. Well, I see you refer to me as my street name, Connie. You don't really know me too well, but I will allow it. Are you kidding me? You I remember crossed. the first time. How you was crossed. the game? It was 1968. And, and, and the Cubs were up 9-2. to two. Was I playing left field at the time? Shut right down for a second. I'm talking. I said, it's 9-2. to two. We're going to have a special guest in the booth. And I said, hey, there's this flamingo. He wants to come by. And I had you up on the booth. And you said, I remember this one time I had two legs. But I'd only stand on one. Because standing on one and two legs is for babies. And you're not a baby, right? So you're standing on one leg. Well, that's all the time we got for today. Conrad, I'm sorry you didn't get to interject with your, your potent thoughts. You just interject your potent thoughts in my mouth. I tend to do that from now and then. I mean, before I was a broadcaster, I was a prostitute. I used to, you know, do it for money. Well, I'm, sh I'm glad we could share just if one final kiss. If one final kiss, please. Oh. I love you, Conrad. You're my bestest friend. <laughs>